Okay, so to build these nesting boxes, uh, I'm just using some scrap material. Uh, it's it's uh, standard plywood in 5 8 Thickness there, uh, I have lots of leftover ugly stuff there from flooring projects and whatnot. And uh, it's a perfect time to burn them up with all these small pieces uh, from the leftovers here. Uh, you can make this out of OSB no problem, you know they're birds, it doesn't have to be incredibly strong but OSB or is just not quite as strong as the standard plywood so being that I have it already uh, I'm just going to use it up. Okay, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have six exactly 12 inch by 12 inch by 12 inch openings uh, which is about ideal size for a, a nest box. Like I said this is gonna be a, a quick and crude type thing it's going to be very uh, effective, but uh, maybe not the prettiest thing the world has ever seen. Uh, i got to get these chickens moved out right away, man, so let's get at her. I'm just using a nice straight 2x4 as a ruler uh, to cut the width I need on this sheet for my boxes. Okay, so I'm just starting here. I've cut seven 12 by 12 pieces here. And I'm just gonna start off by nailing that to the ends of the back piece. I'm just using two inch framing nails, nothing fancy. Uh, you know, these are birds. They're not gonna put a whole bunch of weight down on this. Now this is the top section I'm just putting in here. Getting lined up here now. So we'll get this one nailed in here too. And you know, that's one thing that's nicer. I'm getting away with just nailing plywood to plywood here because I'm using just using this OSB instead of our shit. Just using the standard plywood instead of OSB, eh? So we'll nail this all the way around the perimeter and then now uh, put the bottom piece on. Okay, just nailed the bottom of the box in here. You can see I gave myself a little extra room there on the front. Uh, that way they can probably have a little easier time jumping up in there with how I want to build this. You can see it overlaps six inches on the front. So uh, the thickness of them ones is 12 and 5 eighths. The back one is 12 inches. And uh, this one is uh, 18 and 5 eighths. So uh, I'm not entirely sure where I'm gonna put this. Yeah, I think right in this corner, uh, which will be good. So um, now we're gonna put in these little boxes every 12 inches. So we'll have to measure that out and uh, I've designed this this is 76 and 3 8 inches long so I can fit six 12 inch openings in terms of like width here and that also accounts for all the 5 8 pieces in between so okay so here's how things are looking apologies the lighting in here isn't great you can see what I do here I uh, mark uh, 12 inches from the inside and then uh, make a mark on the top and bottom, line it up there. And then as I nail, making sure it stays nice and straight, I'm nailing both the top and the bottom, and then I'll nail the back in as well. And that way it'll hold very nice and straight. You know, uh, I'm not getting too meticulous about this, you know, like just throwing it together pretty quick here. Uh, you have to be, you know, if it's not perfect, it's not perfect, it's still gonna look nice, so. Uh, we'll get these last two put in here and hang her on the wall. Lift it up here. I've marked this for three foot off the ground I thought would be good. And uh, I put two nails at my three foot markings. I measured in two different spots, three foot high. And then uh, I put the nails, just helps me hold it there while I get it secured. And uh, I can see where my studs are here. So I'm just gonna get it tacked in there. Yeah, I think that's about about perfect, you know. Uh, you know, it's a nice height. They like being a little bit away from things. 
when they're laying their eggs. If it's too low, it'll be too much hassle for them. And uh, you don't want too low and then it gets built up with shavings from the ground in the winter. So uh, what I'm gonna do here now is that every place I can, nail to the studs, nail right there, or screw, use my drill because uh, it'd be impossible to get a hammer and maneuvered in there. So uh, we'll drill probably three, four for each stud into the back and also into the side. And uh, we'll show you the finished result. Okay, here's the finished product on our nesting boxes. You can see they're nice and good and straight there. And uh, I also added a three inch strip to the front. Losing daylight here, so it might be hard to see. You no, know, I think that'll be a pretty nice design there for nesting boxes. I put this six inch overhang so it's easier for the little buggers to fly up there. Uh, it might be just a tad too high, you know, I can, I might put a little ramp up there for them or, uh, you know, it would take three minutes to move this if you ever wanted to. You can see I've drilled it. I've just used two inch nails, which really aren't quite enough, but, so I put lots, four or two inch screws there and I put four per stud all the way along and nailed the corner in as well too. So it's really solid actually. Okay, so now I'm building the door uh, where this is gonna be a fully insulated door and it's gonna be a simple and easy to build door. So um, I'm building this door an eighth of an inch smaller, uh, both uh, width and height than the opening that I have. And I'm gonna cut 45 degree angles into both uh, the top, top and side pieces for this door frame. And uh, it'll make it a le little easier for me to nail them together there. So we'll get that situated and then uh, start insulating the, this door. Okay, so here's my door frame. You can see it. Got my 45s in each side. I cut the 45s in there and then I can really nail it nice. Say hey, you nail straight through as opposed to trying to nail something like this. Say hey, that would be just pain in the ass. So, um, I checked fitment. Giving an eighth of an inch is pretty tight. Uh, I would almost consider going to a quarter of an inch in terms of width, but you know, if I have to push on this door a little bit to get it closed, whatever, you know, I don't want to have drafts in the coop. I'm going to show you something here. Uh, I'm not putting a jam on this door because I don't want to and because I don't have to. Really. Like it's a chicken coop and it's perfectly level. Every single place you put the level. There's snow on the bottom of this here, but see that's, I took all the due diligence uh, when I leveled this and did all the framing. So like, and I use, I always use real nice boards doing the door and window openings. I use real nice boards building the doors. And uh, because these were nice and straight and I took the time to line them up properly, uh, there's gonna be no problem hanging a door to that uh, opening there, so. Uh, we'll get at her. Like I said, it's going to be tight. Uh, but we'll we'll see what we can do here. So I'm just testing the fitment of my door here. So there's going to be two more sheets of plywood onto this. So it's like I said, it's going to be tight. Uh, but uh, I'm just trying to hold it exactly where it's going to be and seeing if I can slide it there pretty good. You see that? So, uh, you know, um, it's better if you if you do fuck something up, it's better to know about it now before you do all your other work. Okay, here's where we're at now. Uh, you can see I've added boards across. They were cut uh, 22 and 3 quarters. And I've lined them up directly in the center. Uh, at, this is the top of the door. This is five inches directly in the center. Uh, and then this one is 10 inches from the bottom, directly on center. And this one's directly in between that one and that one. And uh, that's where I'm gonna put my my hinges, eh? And I, uh, just, it'll add a lot of, it'll add extra support for the door. Uh, having these boards across uh, the frame of the door here, as well as 
It's where I'm putting my hinges, eh? So, uh, let's get at her, guys. Now we're gonna cut a sheet of plywood. Uh, cut it to or whatever the dimensions of this door are, I already forget. And uh, we'll nail it all the way around, really nail the piss out of it, because that's what's gonna give us all the strength, eh? And nail all these boards across too. And then we'll uh, insulate it and put another sheet, hang and uh, hang it up there. So, me and the dog, giving her. Okay, here's where we're at. Uh, you can see I got that sheet on the other side and uh, I really peppered it in there. Sure, it's good and secure. And uh, now we're gonna cut pieces of styrofoam insulation uh, to put in here. So this insulation is two and a half inches thick and uh, that way it's the exact same thickness as uh, as our two by fours laid uh, horizontally there, laid on the wide side there. Uh, and we'll be able to sandwich the pieces in there nice. So I'm just cutting this out with the uh, exacto knife. I don't actually know how good this is gonna go, but should be able to get her figured here. Well, there's definitely gonna be a better way to cut that. I've never really worked with this stuff before actually, but see I got it sandwiched right in there. It's nice and flush. And uh, I'm cutting these pieces pretty damn snug. See, I can maybe be a little better there, but it's pretty tight. So uh, we'll keep cutting the big pieces here. You can see this is what the styrofoam insulation looks like. It's actually not all that cheap. Uh, 50 bucks this sheet here. And uh, yeah, so three more pieces to go. Well, that's looking pretty dandy, guys. You know, like I got it in there, uh, like uh, I got a nice snug fit on it. Not so snug, you really gotta beat on it to get it in there, but snug enough that it's never gonna go anywhere, especially sandwiched between uh, two pieces of plywood. So uh, this is gonna be real nice and insulated here, guys. Okay, so I'm just working on getting these, uh, these are big hinges. I don't actually know the proper terminology for them, uh, but I just usually, Call them barn hinges or whatever, they always, I don't know what the hell they're called actually. So uh, like I said, I put seven inches from the top right in the center and then 10 inches from the bottom right in the center. And uh, it works out nice that way uh, with your hinges. So I'm just getting these lined up. I had marked where these hinges need to go. I got a mark here I'm looking at. And it uh, should line up right to the center of those three boards that I put across there initially. And these are some real pretty heavy duty screws. Okay, I got the door lifted up into place there and uh, I got it, the bottom sitting on uh, two shims there. And uh, we're just gonna attach these here. And you can see I've uh, done a great job of buggering up my bottom hinge, so I'll have to pick up another one there. I really, really dropped the door there pretty good, and yeah, she's she's a write-off, no doubt. So we'll get some of these big old screws put in through here. Okay, now the door's not swinging half too bad. I'm gonna put a nice little handle on it here. Uh, I'm not sure where, just wherever I figure is comfortable, I guess. Just bolt it in, nothing fancy, like all these little hinges and door handles are all under five bucks, eh? They're nothing fancy at all. Yeah, that's pretty dandy, guys. Locking mechanism here to put on my door. And you know, uh, this is to keep stuff like bears out, eh? Like, uh, put a lock on there because they can figure out simple mechanisms pretty quick, them big bears, you know. Um, so I'm just gonna put this on top of the door, uh, whichever order you figure. Like, you can put it like this, or you can put it like this. I don't know, whichever. I just, I think I'm just gonna put it like this, though. But, uh, 
to each their own, I guess. Yeah, that I think that's where it sits real nice there. So we'll get that bolted in here. Too. So yeah, now I'll be able to put a little lock on there and uh, should hold on, keep the bears a little bit away. Anyway, you can see here, this door is swinging about as good as you expect for a door swinging on two hinges. With the bottom, it's the bottom's pretty loose, and this is a heavy door, so it needs all the support. And I got some like I didn't do quite a perfect job cutting this stuff here on the on the inside piece. And there's a couple spots that's catching a bit right now, but it's tight, eh? See, I have to kick in the bottom. It's not quite going. So I'll have to get that other hinge there as well as do a little sanding here just on the plywood to get that door to sit just a little bit better because right now it's just a little bit fucked. You can see I've also put a little uh, door on the front with the exact same strategy as um, how I built uh, one, the big door there, but uh, I just used two of these little hinges in no real particular fashion. Just, just get this unlocked here, same lock and key as the other one. You pull her open, and uh, pretty dandy. And you close her off there, if I can get her situated here. So uh, that'll work nice uh, for when I build the run here, which won't be won't be this before this winter it'll be in the spring likely i'll be able to get you out there no problem and also put uh, i should show you i just put a little nail at the top so it'll uh hold wide open there and let the chickens get you around eh so mint okay i'll show you what i'm working at here now quite a mess in here don't bother too much about that but you can see my nest box is there and i'm just building the pen a coop inside the coop huh so uh this is uh roughly it's about four four uh four foot by three foot give or take and it's three high and uh you can see i've put plywood on the inside here and joined them together so now this is about the perfect size space for my 20 hens to uh, gather all together and huddle up and sleep like uh, how they do at home there. And uh, we're going to insulate these walls and it'll be nice and uh, not too high so they can go in there and sleep or hang out there on the cold days. And uh, like each hen produces about the same amount of heat as a 10 watt light bulb so you got 20 hens. Uh, think of it as 20 little light bulbs in there uh, and that nice little insulated piece there they should be able to keep that nice and warm even and uh, they'll probably hang out there on the real cold days and uh, really stay nice and warm yet they'll be able to uh, run around here and get plenty of exercise and keep entertained and uh, the biggest thing is because it's Got a low ceiling, I guess you could call it, is uh, that way not too much heat is lost. Like there's so much square footage here, which I needed for my big strong coop so that it's not uh, ripped apart by bears. And uh, it, it'll be nice, they'll have lots of room all winter. They'll be good and happy, eh? So um, I built the opening here on the door pretty darn high because it's gonna be probably six inches of shavings in here right away. And I'll probably have to clean that out. But what we're going to do now here is insulate it. And then uh, we're going to put a big door on it. So you pull it, open it up. It's probably going to swing this way and rest on the nest boxes there. And then I'll just uh, jump the fence, eh? And then I can clean it out or whatever. And uh, also they're probably going to end up laying in here on me, which is, which is not a problem at all, eh? So let's get out of here. Okay, awesome. Now I insulated these walls and uh, it's really gonna be nice and warm in here. Like it'll be pretty good out here. You know, the entire entire structure is draft free. It's got nice big windows and uh, you know, everything's sealed up nice, but this will really help hold the heat in there. And like uh, this little project is really not costing me any, any money. They're just little bits and pieces of framing and uh, sheathing and insulation and it's uh 
just kind of my my prototype here for keeping birds without heat so uh we'll have to see how she goes i'm not sure how they're first gonna take to it uh, i might have to feed them in there or something to get them to start going in there and uh yeah so they're probably gonna end up roosting on top of this and shitting everywhere but way she goes man so now we're gonna sheathe in the outside and build us a nice door here guys well here she be all sheathed and insulated there uh, you can see these sheets are pretty ugly they've been sitting in the dirt a while it's a pretty crude little prototype i got going here but um it should work dandy now we're just gonna build the door okay get just getting some work done on this door here i'm using the styrofoam insulation again and uh i'm gonna get ready to set that on top gotta put the plywood on this side and uh, i'm using the styrofoam because i already bought it got nothing else to use it for and that way i can build that door nice and thin it's well insulated and it's just working out dandy so stay tuned guys so there's no doubt this here is pretty crude uh i used some real uh shitty old material i had laying around in the bush you know like all this stuff uh, it's a covered dirt and you know i didn't design the shit out of it but uh, you know it's gonna serve its purpose and it's kind of just a, a prototype eh? at this point we'll see how it works and uh, go from there but I nearly open it with one hand you can see I've put two by fours uh, the thickness of the door down so it sits flush and uh, they're attached to the studs this way you never have to worry about this big door coming down and collapsing and uh, especially because they are like gonna hang out all on top of here and uh, that way this door will never collapse. You can see it's nice and flush here, so that's dandy. Me and the old trusty dog here. <laughs> Still giving her. Isn't that right, my big boy, huh? Anyway, uh, so I realized there's just a little bit of a, a slight bend here. Like this is a pretty straight door, but I was just catching a little bit in here. I still am a little bit, you can see some blue paint, but I just took off a very, very small chunk of material there on my door. And uh, I've really improved how that door is sliding, eh? You can see it's still tight and I could take a little bit more off there. I, I like that it's tight though, you know, it's, it's a pretty damn airtight door. Still just a little bit catching, but you know, no problem at all really like it's opening pretty damn good um but we're gonna put some some um fuck is this weather stripping around the door here uh just to seal it up real nice so we'll get that on and i should mention too like because we, we're in the heart of winter and it's opening nice like that it should even theoretically like come summertime it should open open real nice a little bit better you know and it's actually kind of nice building these doors when it's a little it's colder here now because then uh you won't have trouble closing them in the winter time so i think this will just be dandy guys okay so i've just put on some weather stripping around the door uh you can see it's got this rubber piece here to seal it up oh i missed a screw but uh i'm pretty 90 percent sure i didn't do this quite exactly i just technically supposed to do it but this is gonna seal up these doors real nice this is about twenty dollars worth of uh, weather stripping so it also acts as a stop for the door so it stops there nice and then can you lock her up there mint oh good god what am i doing and then from the scrap i was also able to do the sides of my little door here but uh, I didn't have enough quite for the top, so maybe I'll pick some more up when I get a chance. And that'll be just dandy, guys. There will be no draft getting through this door, I can tell you that much for free. That is mint. Okay, so I'm just getting the windows put into my chicken coop. They finally arrived, so that's just awesome, guys. So, uh... I tried and I tried and I tried to get my flashing tape to stick. It would not. It's too cold. Uh, I have the old temperature stuff. I took the roll inside to the wood stove there and then put it on. Couldn't get it to stick. Okay, so um, I'm probably going to have to pull these windows off in the spring and uh, 
put the flashing tape and whatever else, get them sealed up a little better. But what I'm doing for the meantime, and it'll work just dandy for the winter, putting a healthy, healthy bead of a window silicone all the way around the window. And uh, I'm fastening it here. These are the nailing flange windows. They're really easy to to um, to install and uh, and to work with type deal. Making sure I get an even gap on all the sides. And uh, you see they're just they're nice great big sliding windows, hey? So those will just work dandy for this chicken coop, guys. So um, yeah, so what I'm doing here, uh, I'm in a hurry here. I uh, just putting it up there, using my level on top, uh, making it, getting it level, making sure I got even gaps and fastening the window with these two inch screws. There's nothing fan or inch and a half screws. There's nothing fancy about what I'm doing here now. And I have a, if you're looking for more on putting in windows, I have a whole video there on the cabin build, but uh, we just got to get this here done guys. Stay tuned, just about ready for chickens. Okay, now I'm just using some window and door expanding uh, spray foam there and uh, sealing up the crock on the windows. This here stuff is incredibly messy to deal with, but uh, it's not a problem and you don't have to worry about it because once it's dry, you can just cut it or uh, all this stuff will just snap right off, eh? No problem. So uh, not too pretty right now and you know, there's a lot I could do inside here and I could put window trim cover up the silicone, or fuck, uh, the spray foam, but because it's all, uh, I'm gonna have to take out these windows, it would just be a pain. And when I take out those windows, I'll just have to cut the, cut the spray foam on the outside. So anyway. Okay, so here's where we're at on the chicken coop build, guys. Uh, in this video, we got the windows put in. We got our nice door built here with uh, door stop weather trim on there that's opening great you see my windows are in here we built the little chicken coop door got it sealed up good uh we got the nesting boxes built quick and easy uh i don't think they'll have a problem getting up there they are birds but if they do i'll put a little ramp there for them and uh this here is my very crude very simple design and uh, once again, the idea behind it, it's a fully insulated three by four piece. And the idea behind it is they're all gonna go in there to sleep at night and they'll be able to keep that size of uh, building nice and warm. I didn't build any roosts. Uh, the reason for that is they're gonna roost up on here anyway. Uh, it, maybe on a warmer day or uh, during the day kind of thing. And why it's nice is because if they roost on a two by four, they can't huddle all together. But if they all roost up on here, they can all huddle together and stay warm that way. They'll huddle together in a nice big ball and it's just, it's just awesome that way. So anyway, guys, uh, there's nothing fancy about the inside or outside of this chicken coop. Um, and we're gonna leave the build series here for the winter. This is how it's gonna stay for the winter. All the work's done here now. Uh, I will be getting to the cosmetic stuff, like all the exterior, whether it be siding or paint and the soffit and uh, all that stuff in the spring. Uh, I'll be putting more rocks underneath here and then building a chicken run first. These are my first priorities in the spring. But for now, it's uh, it's getting set for my birds for this winter. So thanks for watching, guys. I know it wasn't my most exciting video, uh, but uh, I hope you enjoyed anyway. Hope it was helpful for anyone setting up their coop there or anything. And uh, yeah, stay tuned, guys. Next episode, we're bringing out the chickens. I can't wait. Stay tuned, guys. <laughs>